Welcome to High Point University's premier life skills seminar featuring HPU's in-residence leaders and other global change agents. Will you please join me in giving Professor Quinn a very warm welcome. Thank you, thank you. You're sitting in the lobby of a formal office building waiting to be called in to a very important sales meeting. It's your first job interview with the hiring manager at the company you'd give your right arm to work for. So you're a sales professional now and you're about to go in and sell a you and the stakes couldn't be higher. There are three others sitting in the chairs in the same lobby waiting to go in after you. So are you nervous? Oh yeah. And so today we're gonna to talk about your goal in this meeting is to position yourself as a professional for maximum impact to be selected from all the other candidates who are really well qualified. But you're a professional. And so, this morning I'd like to recommend that you get yourself a copy of this book. I think you'll agree, the author is probably one of the most impactful professionals that any of us have ever met. He wrote this book just for those of us who are about to do what you're about to do. See, selling, the selling profession is only for folks who can distinguish themselves and differentiate themselves from all the other competition, which is probably a fine choice. But in relation to you, uh, it pales. Now, you, you can get this book on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Or, <laughs> You can choose a sales minor and come to class, and I've got a few, and I give them away. It's up to $29.95 on Amazon or select us. We'll talk about that in a minute. So Dr. Cobain recommends six things to do to make yourself distinctive. And the first one is to position yourself in your own mind. How you see yourself affects how the interviewer is going to perceive you. It affects how you interview. If you see yourself as important, they'll see you as important. And so self-concept is the very first, it's the foundation for a professional. Dr. Cobain, you, and, and so, study your self-image, your self-concept, and take an assessment of how you stand. We'll talk about this in a little more in a minute. How you feel about yourself. There are ways to change it. There are ways to improve your self-concept. And it's important that you start early. Some of you have already started. But it's important that all of us start early. First step is, Never look backwards, always look to the future. A professional athlete. Let's take a, a women's volleyball player in D1 or an NFL football line person. You're knocked down. Your challenge is to get up and forget that and make the next play work. Second thing, there are ways to, there are tools you can use to help. I've got some that your professors in the selling class have others. We've all been in this all of our lives. So there are podcasts, books, there are, there are champions like Dr. Cobain. It's important that you get one and read one every day. Nito sends us the thoughts for today. He does that because that's a life habit of his own and he's sharing it subtly with you. So I suggest you take notice. I encourage you to take notice and find a source of those for yourself. Secondly, you've seen this expression. 
Position yourself with your attitude towards other people. Some people come in a room and say, here I am, or here I am. Not this man. He sees you walk into Slain on Halloween. Who was here last year? Did anybody see him in Slain with Halloween? Giving away those Jigunda chocolate bars with three vice presidents behind him with bags full? Did you see him? It was, it was before Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, when we were open, I saw them and it was so much fun. And I remember picking them up at the last year. That, 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 that's it. Some people walk in the room and say, here I am. Nito walks, he sees you come into Slane, and he goes, there you are. I'm so glad you came. His focus is not self-centered, not self-centered. It's centered on the other person. I remember the first year I was here, like some of you last year, and I was a new professor. I'm walking down, heading for Wilson on the sidewalk here, and the black limo comes by, and the window goes down, zzz, and I hear this little short, fat guy go, I've heard good things about you. I was so thrilled, honest to God. I ducked in the bushes and called my wife and said, honey, he loves me. <laughs> he doesn't know me from a bag of doorknobs, but he said it and I believed him. So positioning yourself with, towards, uh, with the attitude towards other people in the first meeting is everything for you. Second thing. The third thing is to position yourself with your appearance. You know in the flash of those first couple of seconds as you stand in the doorway, uh, you can't have a redo. It's indelible. And so grooming, dress, posture, expression. Think of Dr. Cobain. Think about seeing somebody for the first time, don't you think that a person who's well-dressed may be more important than someone who looks like a slob? And so think about it before you go into every sales call and certainly this job interview. Now with your actions. Remember you're in her office, not yours. It's about her. And so your gait, your courtesies, your handshake, please God, we get back to handshaking instead of bumping, um, makes a tremendous first impression. Now let's talk about handshakes for a minute because we've been there, we stopped and we'll be going back. H handshakes are a huge risk. Would you agree? There's, there's probably six different ways you could mess this up. I mean, indelibly, right? If you're a big burly guy like I am, you probably could give him or her the claw and watch her eyes water as she fights not to go down on one knee in pain. Or I could give her the fish, thinking I'm too strong, so I give her the limp fish. Either, or the damp one. Can't do that. Can't do that. So I recommend you think of handshakes like pilots do who fly a single engine jet and they have one minute of gas left, but the carrier is a minute and a half away. And so they have to call for refueling just to get home. And so a handshake, as you probably know, is like refueling a jet. Let me, let me, let me, let me explain what I mean. This, when you refuel the jet, your goal is to fly your fuel nozzle up into the waiting, uh, your, fuel get, uh, your fuel tank opening into the fuel nozzle that's been let down from behind the tanker, whom Francisca's father used to fly in the Air Force. So there, here comes the boom. I've got the gas can and I have to fly my jet into that, and I have to, I have to connect firmly, but not too firmly to rock, rock them. If I, if I do it weakly, the gas might leak around the nozzle and flow over my canopy back to my jet engine, I'll become a Roman candle. So it's gotta be firm, 
uh, but not too firm to bend the nozzle. So I, I engage. So when you're handshaking, remember that. This is the fuel nozzle coming out of the tanker. There's where the gas comes out. This is my gas tank cap. This is where the fuel goes in. I've got to be firm, but not too firm, and make sure that the, it's secure. And so I fly up to the tanker, and I engage. And then the fuel starts flowing. So handshake, and I can see it engages because his elbow went back just a tad. And I wish we didn't have the pandemic on us. I would demonstrate with you, but we won't, you're, you're off the hook for now. So remember that handshake is like refueling a jet. I normally ask you to now turn to each other and do it, but don't touch him. Don't touch him. <laughs> Position yourself with your words. You're distinguishing yourself from all the others in the crowd out in the, out in the lobby. So syntax, grammar, uh, unnecessary words, accents. If the question that they pose, first of all, is, oh, hi, Larry, it's thank you for coming in. I'm glad you're happy to see me. Why don't you have a seat and tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh-oh. Now, those of you who were in the selling class with us professors know that that is the most important first question you will always get asked at every phase of your life. I got it when I came to interview here, and I'm a geezer. And it's still happening. It's going to happen to you at this interview. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So come to the selling club, get join the selling class, learn the two minute drill, we call it, which makes you answer that question so distinctively, just like the professional on TV who's the newscaster. She could tell you paragraph after paragraph about the lead story, but she tells you four sentences, bing, bang, boom, and you get the gist. If you want to learn more, you've got to tune into their website and read the rest of the story. Same with you. So your words are extraordinarily important. Your focus. People will remember that you were not self-focused. You weren't introverted. You weren't inferior. You weren't thinking, oh my god, I wonder if I said that. Oh, I said that wrong. Rather, like Nito Cobain, he's focused on you. And as he's talking, it's not about him and the bag of candy he has. It's about the joy in your face. His goal today was to make you happy with this Kit Kat that weighs about 12 pounds. And he wants to see it in your eyes. So focusing on other people is a professional trait that you're going to need every day in selling. And so with those tips, you can be the one they select at this company to die for with all those soft qualities. So uh, sincerely, let's, let's dig deeper into this book at another time. But let's now move to the present day. It's today. It's at High Point. You're a junior, you're a sophomore, you're a junior, you're a senior at High Point University. What matters today is who are you in the minds of everybody who sees you today. We just talked about positioning yourself in your mind. Now, what does it look like from the other side? And you've heard it talked about in other talks. You've heard about it in leadership classes. We're talking about your personal brand. What, what does the label on this product say about you? So let's talk about Doing the self-assessment, I recommend it. It, it. If you can take time, maybe over the weekend, it's going to be busy here this weekend, so do it next weekend. But take a look at, at what do I want people to say when they, what's the first thought that comes into their mind when they think about me? Um, is it distinctive? How, and speaking of people, how wide is my network? How many people um, in my dorm, in my classes, in my clubs, on staff at Starbucks, among the professors, 
and among the staff who sit in Robert's Hall. How many of them know me? That's, this is a training ground, and, the, and we are waiting to look at the brands around. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to distinguish yourself. But you've got to keep those, and you've got to keep your self-image in mind as well, as we said from the other slides. What am I proud of? Not what, not what drew me down yesterday, but what am I proud of today? Here's a little diagram of what your brand uh, you, could, you could picture being made up of. It's, it's made up of equal parts of how you perform and this image about you, how others perceive you, your brand. But look at this little more important. Little more important is your network. With whom are you acquainted? Who may not know your name, but recognize you as you walk by? Maybe that's what Dr. Cavain did when he rolled down the window and said, I've heard good things about you. He may not even remember my name, but he knows that person. And so how about you? What, what, what is your exposure and who knows your track record? Let's practice that here. You're, you're here for th three more years, two more years. Let's practice that here. And so when you put those together, what you come up with is your reputation. When employers call uh, Professor Michael and they say, can you name two or three sharp people in your class? We've got two openings here at GE, two openings here at Stryker. They pay a lot of money and we'd like your best. Who are your best? Now, he doesn't go through his grade book. He goes through his memory bank. He goes through the flashes, the images, impressions you've made. And so it's, it's important you reach out, not to be in class, but to be so engaged that it's enjoyable for him. It's not about you in class as much as it is about your, your engagement with your network. Every class. So let's say, like me, you have a little work to do. Let's talk about some things that might just be Areas that are ripe for improvement. We're going to look at character, skills. Uh, what, what, what do you do outside of class? How are you engaged in, in building the mission of this, of this university for others to see? The brand goes beyond you now, across the campus, and now into the city, and up into home in New Hampshire, where you come from. You see Dr. Cobain making tremendous efforts to do that. Well, now we am Dr. Cobain. And so how, how do we play a role in this community? And truly, when you go to bed at night and reach down into your heart, what really do you believe about the qualities that you need to make yourself a distinctive woman and man? So what if you need a little improvement? Well, think about it. Wasn't she great in the last, did you watch her in the last Olympics when she had the breakdown? She didn't get on the airplane and go home. She stayed and she watched you do the rest of the performance. And then she got in front of the mics. How the heck did she do that? Well, she's a pro. Just like the defensive lineman in the NFL has to be. Stand up, do everything with a sense of urgency and drive to win. She couldn't get on the pummel horse but she sure could stand there and applaud for her sisters. Um, ways to act with unyielding, that's an important word. Unyielding integrity, you're always on. And, and whether we're in class together or you're in a fraternity sorority meeting, what, what, you know how word travels here, it's infectious. And it'll be the same amongst your prospect and your customers, how you treated that prospect last time gets communicated when she's in an industry conference. Boy, wait till you meet her from Stryker. She's a wonderful woman. I hope she calls on you. I told her to. So unyielding integrity. And what if you need a makeup? What if you need a makeover? You're working on being prepared for exposure. That's the role at campus, not to have a good time. The, I don't care who told you that. The role is to build your brand now. And so look for mentoring relationships. That's why I put it on the top. 
Get to know each professor after class. There's 36 of you in the class. There's three of you who go up and shake her hand, his hand after class. Do it. And tell me a little, ask me a little bit about myself. Focus on me. I'm just as timid about focusing on you as you are about me. So you take the first step. I suggest you come up and she, make, make each professor a mentor with you. That's how Nito asks us to select professors. Caring. Caring is the first one. Extraordinary education is close second, but caring is the first one. You don't see that in other universities. Research might be the first. Here it's caring. So you am High Point University exude that. Now, here's what could go wrong. Your train could fall off the tracks if you violate the integrity sacred rule. So it's going to happen. And I don't want you to look backwards after it did the first time. But make it your goal, make it your passion to be a woman of your word, a man of your word. If you make a promise, no, no, everyone will know you'll deliver. There's no doubt about it. If he said he'd do it, if we had this project and he's the leader, it's done. I don't even look back at that. Make sure that your relationships with your peers are, are laudable. Make sure they talk about, yeah, I'm on the team with Larry. Yeah, we'll be all right. Don't worry. I know he's sick. He's virtual. Don't worry. He's communicating with us every 10 minutes. So your peer group is, is, is your advertising arm. They're your PR company. Here's another one. Presence. So we just refueled our jet. We know how not to, not to give the, the bear claw or, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the limp fish. But make sure that your eye contact is like Nito's. Now, he didn't want, when you walk into Slain, he's got this bag of $16 million chocolates, and the vice president's walking behind him with extras. He doesn't say, oh, say, here, take one. How about you? You want one? Here, have one of them. No, no, no. He locks on you. It's eye contact with Nito. He looks at you like, holy crow. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I, 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 president, what? You do the same. Eyeballs. It's all in the eyeballs. And make sure that you're supporting others. I was at a meeting the other night. Um, I, we broke up into tables, workshop tables, and students from all different years were at those tables. And a few of us, Francesca and myself, and a few others sat at each table and were working with others. Well, you're supposed to come in business, casual dress to these sales meetings. And wouldn't you know, some freshman who didn't get the word was just told that she had to be there, shows up. It looked like she was just coming out of the locker room. I think her pants were tied with a shoestring and she had sneakers and a t-shirt that said Barbaritos on it. So without saying, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come in here. Not to make her feel bad, I said, well, why don't you sit with us? Like I didn't notice the clothes, like Nito does to me. Oh, you're important, you're important, why don't you sit with us? And I knew that the other five, probably I couldn't count on them to be that kind. And honest to Pete, I told my friends when I got home about this, five of them, who are the important kids, turned to her and said, hi, my name is Jennifer. Glad you came. Like she was dressed in business casual. It was wonderful. So that part, you hope that happens to you like Dr. Cavain will do to you on Halloween. So do it to others. It's important that you get caught supporting others who need your help. That's, that's the brand I'd like to see most important. Don't forget to pretend that your time here at High Point is about having fun. Have fun. And, and include everyone in it and build your brand as you do it. Uh, and so make sure you own your reputation. Help others improve theirs with your example. And your, your brand will benefit from it. And so here's a final few thoughts. When you get up in the morning before you swing your feet off the mattress and hit the floor, 
and all the thoughts about yesterday, how you really did a poor job yesterday. Oh my God, I did so bad. The lineman got knocked down. I want you to look, do what I do. I look, I can see my mirror from my bed. So I look in the mirror and I see this big, tall, handsome guy. And now I feel better about myself. And I swing my feet out of the bed and, and they hit the deck. You do it. It isn't what they said about you yesterday. It isn't what you did yesterday. It's who you're going to be next. How about if you were Nito Cobain? He can't even reach the floor with his feet. He sings his feet out and he's still got six feet to go. How'd you like those short legs? And can I say that? I th I, no, mm, let's hold off on that. So do it. You are who you think you are. The way you feel about yourself is the way others will perceive you. It'll help you in the interview. And this, I can't say it enough. Now that we're alone in here, your family's driven back to Boston, let's talk. It's showtime. You're in a job interview for the next four years, three years, two years with the professors and me. And when they call him and ask him, can you think of three that we ought to talk to? They're going to do it this weekend because they're coming Monday and Tuesday for the sales career fair. Can you think of two or three we ought to pick out from this pile of 20 resumes I have? Both of us can remember three because of this. And so you're on. So all of these things Dr. Cobain talks about, all these things we've just discussed, try to make them part of your brand starting today. Some of you already have, honestly, as I look in the audience, I, I know the, exactly the brand of about a dozen of you. I haven't met the others, and, and, and so does Professor Michael and Professor Haynes. We, we know you, and we can talk about you, and some have impressed the heck out of us. That's your, that's your objective. This is a job interview. Okay, you got all that. Oh, this is the last one. <laughs> Remember Christmas when you were seven? God bless your grandmother. She sent you those socks. Holy crow, they're in the box. And you open them up and they're big fluffy jobbers. You wouldn't wear those with a gun to your head. And your mother says, now honey, grandma loves that color. And she has a pair just like that. So I want you to go upstairs. Here's the note card. You write a note in pen. Uh, put a stamp on it and send it to grandma so she gets it. She'll sit in her rocking chair all day and read that. Buy some of these at the bookstore. I think they're probably $3 a card. A box of 12 is probably 40 bucks. Get them. I think. And then you got to go to the post office and get those. Who has stamps in their room? No, you, are you sure? Okay, all right, all right. You're not supposed to say that, it blows what I'm gonna say. You gotta, you gotta get stamps. Because I know you, except for you, don't have those. So go to the, go to the bookstore, lay out $40 and get the Carter cards that say thank you in embossed writing. Then go to the post office and get a sheet of card, uh, stamps and write the thank you note. And when it arrives on the interviewer's desk, it's the only letter that's going to arrive on our desk. No one gets hard copy. There's no inboxes on desks today. She's waiting for a text from you uh, with a grunt on it. Hey, loved it. Or something like that, dude. Uh, instead, let her open the Carter card that says, thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you today. I certainly hope we continue this at another time. Warm regards, Larry and put your business card in there. If grandma liked it about the socks, this one is counting on you to make her next bonus. And this impression could seal the deal. Okay, now you got it. We got all that. Anybody need money for the cards? Come, come, come see me later. We, I want everybody to have the cards. Let's get serious. I want you to declare a sales minor and just write this down. If you've been writing anything else, throw that away. Do this. <laughs> so, a sales minor. What else could you take that's this important? I'm not going to list them, but come and I'll talk to you in private. You need a sales minor. 
The soft skill, the life skill that Nito is a consultant about is this. And we use his book in class and you're gonna love the experiences that you'll go through. So take it, if you're in the business school, come on, you've already taken three of those classes. This is a gift. This is like a cherry on the Sunday. Just pick it up, it's there for you. But if you put it on your resume, major in business, major in accounting, minor in professional sales. Whoa, it's catnip. Nobody's got that. And that's why Dr. Cobain put it in your university. So come see me or Professor Michael or Professor Haynes or Professor Holcomb. And we'd like to take you through a little sales talk on whether or not you should do this. You're going for advising next week anyway, right? Tell her you want this. So <laughs> thank you for coming. It's, it's really a pleasure talking to you. And, uh, <laughs>